Hi! So today I'll show you how to import and export files from Resonite. Now, first off, we'll start with importing. So we'll open our dashboard and go to the Files tab, actually. Now, in here, we have a GLTF as well as the textures that go with it. Now, firstly, let's start off with this assets color .png, since most likely, in most cases, you'll want to import textures into here. Now, this little orange tab here imports it like this. Now, all this is is just basically a pointer that points at a specific file. Now, if you save this into your actual Resonite inventory, it will upload this raw file onto the Resonite servers, and if you share it then from there, it will download from the servers. However, if you initially bring it in like this, anyone who then grabs it and clicks export file has to download it from your machine. Now, this is really useful, for example, if you're in a very populated world and I just want to give, you know, my friend, for example, a specific file, like, for example, like an image or things that aren't supported even, like, for example, a zip file. I could simply spawn it out, hand it to my friend. They could then just grab it, open their context menu, and click export file. And no one else would ever have to load the file because these here don't start downloading until you actually click export file. And they're saved by default if you go to desktop and actually do it in documents resonate. Oh, let me do it with the other hands as you can see this one there. Documents resonate. Now, if you then go to export file, you'll see we now have holder assets color in here. And another way you can actually bring in these files is by just directly dragging it from here and then just, for example, selecting raw file as the option. And as you can see, we now have both of these right here. Now next, as you have already seen, if I drag this in, I'll get this here. And we didn't see this before. Now this here is your import options. Your most used option will usually be image texture, which is the correct import option for any regular image or texture. However, if you're bringing in anything that is like pixelated, like sprite sheets that are based on pixels, or, you know, little icons that are pixelated, you probably want to select pixel art instead, because it'll point filter it by default, which means that it'll actually be pixel accurate, rather than blurring the edges. It won't be using any filtering techniques other than point. Now, if we click image texture, you'll see here we have a pretty gnarly chicken nuggets texture. Now, as you may have noticed, if you go back to files, there's actually multiple files in here. Let's go back, one back up to nuggets, and we'll see there's a texture folder here. If we click here, that will actually bring in the import dialog just as we saw it on just dragging the file in. But it'll look a bit different right now because we're specifically selecting the folder of our images. So for example, if you have your textures in a folder, you'll probably want to click on the folder and click the blue one to bring all of your files in. And then you can either say batch import or you can say individual import. There's also a bit more options down here that are somewhat self-explanatory, but we'll not go over these right now because they're a bit more advanced. Now the individual import will open up multiple import dialogs and for each separate texture you'll decide whether it's an image texture or pixel art. However, if we go and press on batch import, there'll just be one import dialog and we just say image texture and it will import both of them. Now you might be wondering, how do we get to this dialog on a singular file? Well, that's actually even simpler. You just select the file and then either press the blue button at the left top to bring it in the import dialog or you double tap the file. This works both the exact same way and with our model we'll just go to 3D model, regular, regular, auto, auto because I don't know the scale. 
and then just import. As you see, the workflow is the exact same. Now, I'll go over setting up avatars and something like that in a different video. For now, I'll just be showing you how to actually bring the files in. All right, so now we have our file in here. However, we don't want the file in here. We want it somewhere else. Well, if you have a file you want somewhere else, and right now, for example, I let, let's take this here, for example. Let's say we want this outside of Resonite. Now, this does not work with every object because some things are stuff that your computer just can't really represent nicely on export. For example, your normal nameplate, this one you could actually export because it's just an image, but like your normal nameplate is just a text renderer, so there's no real way it can export the mesh for it because the mesh for it is actually just a quad that is then displaying text onto it. Now if we grab this here for example, and we open our dashboard again here, let's, when you go to files, you can press on this little plus here just as you would in your inventory, which will bring up this create new directory thing. If you click it, it opens up your keyboard and let's just call this export attempt. which will create a new folder on your actual computer. You go into here, then we just grab this normally, and we just click this while holding it, just like you would for saving a file in your inventory. And then we can select what we want to export it as. Let's select for now GLTF and export. And instead of saving to your documents folder, this will now save exactly to that location. Now, when you're exporting a mesh, for example, it will not just export the mesh of the object, it will actually also make a little textures folder here, where as you can see, we now have every single texture that was used on here. So if we turn around and go over here, click again, as we've just learned, this little button here for the folder, and then say batch import, and then image texture, it'll start importing every single one of the textures that are used on this object here. Now, the one limitation that we currently have with exporting files is that we can only export static things. So, for example, armatures that are able to move around would be exported as a static mesh. There would be no bones attached, nothing like that. So, if you have a model in here, you can export it in order to then, for example, render it, which is what I do sometimes. However, you cannot export it to work on the avatar and then re-import it. That is currently not possible. Unless your avatar is made of static objects. Like, for example, if you have a little hat, you can export the hat, work on it in Blender, for example, and then import it back into here. Now, I hope this helps you bring it in files, and I hope you have a nice day. If you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them down in the comments. Otherwise, see you in the next one. Bye!